Hello, Danvers. Welcome to Senior Solutions. I'm Karen Halloran from Azure Healthcare. I'll be your host today. This is our first show, and my hope is that you'll continue tuning in and find out some of the um, answers to maybe questions you have or solutions for problems that you're facing. Today, my first guest is John Younger from Assisted Living Locators. Hi, John. Hey, Karen. How, How are you doing I'm today? Phenomenal. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming on the show. So let's just jump right in sure. and start asking you some questions because I'm sure everybody is, you know, curious as to what assisted living locators is. Right. Do you want to tell us what that is? Absolutely. So I am the owner of assisted living locators and I actually work out of Amesbury, Mass. I cover eastern Massachusetts and what we do is help people make the best, most informed and educated decision as to what their next steps might be if they just don't want to stay home or aren't safe to stay home anymore. So helping them look for the assisted living, the independent living, the skilled nursing facility, the nursing home, the memory care, all of the different th options that are out there as possibilities for next steps. That's fantastic, John, because there are so many choices out there. It's confusing for people to navigate through that. So I think that your service you offer is fantastic. Um, how did you get to where you are? So great, you know, so everybody in this business has their personal story. And for me, it was roughly 15 years ago where I had a family member who was going through the process of trying to find an assisted living because she was developing some dementia and some Parkinson's. And she had some great family members trying to help her out. But being it was 15 years ago, she ended up moving three times in three years. And you just can't do that. And I was kind of watching this and just saying, it was a function of nobody really understood what they were looking for. The different communities out there, facilities out there, didn't understand what type of resident that she was going to be and what kind of family was coming in. So there were a lot of questions that weren't answered because they were never asked. Right. And there's no reason why somebody would know what questions to ask because it's not, this is not something that you do right. all the time. And it's brand new. It's usually in a crisis, too, yes. that people start, especially around the holidays. People see family members declining. And you know, then all of a sudden they realize we have to do something. This person is not safe. Right. So where did your interest in working with older adults and families begin? Well, it really was that story of the family that was having, my relative was having difficulty. Um, then I kind of started exploring the different senior resources that were out there. You know, I volunteered at a hospice agency for a little bit. Um, I did some interviewing at assisted living because I was really wanting to make sure somebody could, that I could be there as the guy in the middle, the liaison right. between the families and the different communities so that they're making an educated decision. So that's really kind of what spurred the whole, the whole senior resource mm -hmm. person on. Were you working in the industry before, prior to this company? Not at all. No, so no, you're not new at all. to this. Brand new, um, six and a half years ago. Wow. Oh. Um, actually started kind of looking into this type of a model about 10, 11 years ago. And it was really just, uh, it was all, all about understanding the families, understanding the different communities, because as you said, there's there's 12 just in within a couple mile radius of Danvers. Right, right. And it can be confusing and it's, it's an emotional time as well. Right. And as much as they're the same, there are a lot of differences. A lot of differences. You know, and the wonderful thing is they're all great. You know, I, that's the wonderful thing about this business and the people and the communities and, that are out there. They're all really, really good. There's right. nothing, there's nobody really bad out there. So that's a great resource for our seniors to have. And I agree with you. I've been to all of the yeah. assisted livings in the area, and their sales counselors are unbelievable. Yeah. Just caring individuals, you know, trying to help families. Um, what are the different living and facility options? So there's um, what people look for, and what I encourage people to look at is you've got very various levels of living. You can be independent, 
You can be, you might need some type of assistance. So there's assisted living. And within the assisted living, there's often what they call memory care. So the, you have independent, which is for people who just really are tired of paying their property taxes. They don't want to pay the heating bills. They don't want to, they have a great big house they don't want to take care of anymore. They want to, they're tired of shoveling snow off the car. Um, so they're looking at the independent side of things. Then there are folks who might need some help with what they call ADLs, which is activities of daily living. Things like medication reminders, things like standby assistance for showering, things like helping to get out, up, up out of bed just to get the day going or to yeah. end the day. And then there's memory care, which is also part of assisted living, which is specific, specifically for folks who have dementia. Um, they specialize in that. Another option is, of course, staying home. There are lots of great home care companies where you can stay home. And there's also the skilled nursing environment. Now, one right. thing to say is assisted living is not a nursing home. Correct. It's very different. Correct. You get all your meals. You get meals. You get social interaction. You get activities. And just you get surrounded with all this opportunity to do stuff and keep, you know, and thrive and thrive in your life and live a great quality of life. Right. I will say, though, that, that um, nursing homes do offer all of that. The yeah. difference would be is we have 24-hour RNs. So right. I think at assisted livings, it's probably a higher acuity and things like that. But we do do the same right. thing. Right. So for the nursing home, it's more of a medical model? Correct. Right. Correct. Right. Um, what do you ask, what can you expect from each one of the assisted livings? What are the differences between them? Um, the expectations are in general, you know, meals, housekeeping, laundry, um, um, activities. What you should expect is you should expect round the clock care. The caregivers that are there 24-7 mm -hmm. um, who, who will be there awake overnight in case there's any issues overnight. You can expect, you should expect um, executive directors and mm -hmm. uh, directors of nursing and caregiving who are, uh, who are experienced and understand and are, are very interested in the needs of their residents. Fantastic. So another thing, I'm sure people have questions for families. How do you get paid? What is the cost of using your services? Oh, that's, I love that question. Uh, my cost is no charge to the families. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't charge any money for my service. No cost. Uh, essentially say, I'm a real estate broker for assisted livings. Uh, so I don't charge families any money uh, for my consultation and my visiting with them. And um, I get a referral fee from whatever community facility that my clients move into. That is fantastic. Yeah. I can't see why somebody wouldn't <laughs> utilize your services. Um, how do people decide it's time to look for assisted living? Well, there's a couple different things, Karen. It really, the biggest thing is if it's an emergency type situation. You're not, the, you're not safe to stay home anymore or just don't want to stay home. Most of my clients that I speak with are people who are just, you know, they, they can't manage the stairs. Mm -hmm. They don't want to cook anymore, or, or become become safe, losing safe that safety awareness. Right. So that when you turn the stove on, you boil your water for your tea, and you leave the room, and the stove's still running. Right. So things like that, when it becomes unsafe to stay where you are, mm -hmm. that's kind of the that signal the to, way to you know look for the next step, whatever right. that next step might be. Okay. So what should families look for when they're deciding and they're touring? There are certain things, or criteria, obviously, if each situation is going to be different. Right, right. So when it's the pro the, what they want to look for is after we're having a conversation, the process really is all about the medical needs, physical needs. You know, you need to know what you, you know, physically what you can and can't do, medically what you might need. Location, you know, the location is okay. very key. Do you want to be near, are you moving close to a family member? Right. Or are you moving farther away from the family member? Right. Um, finances are important. Because oh, you know, sure. in the world of assisted living, it's private pay. Correct. And that means you're taking your money out of your pocket. 
Unless you do have uh, long-term care insurance, right. that would also help pay for that. Long-term care and, policy. Right, veterans benefits. Veterans aid and attendance. Aid and attendance, yeah. So that's, that's really good. Um, what about the negatives? What should they be on the lookout for? Are they things that should kind of make them say, well, I don't know? That's a great question. Um, I think a couple of the key things is when, when you walk into an a, a assisted living community, use your nose. Correct. Use your nose. Smell the smells. You know, because you, there might be an overwhelming smell from maybe there was a cleaning. Maybe there's, there's some carpet cleaning. Maybe somebody had an accident. Use the smell. You trust your gut. But don't let the smell say, I'm not going back. Go back another time, another day. Because if the smell's not there, then you've got some people who pay attention right. um, to their, their building and to make sure that everything gets cleaned up. There are, there are spills, there are accidents right. and all the time. It could be uh, situational. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, another thing, are there any secrets about touring a residence, such as, you know, timing that people should know about? I think go with different times. Go more than once. Um, you don't want to go too early in the morning because everybody's getting ready and getting up and you won't see a lot of activity. 10.30, 11 o'clock is always a good, good time, time because there's some activities going on. People are getting ready for lunch. Um, right after lunch is not a great time because people are taking a little nap taking naps, sometimes. you know. Um, 2 o'clock on is a good time because there's always activities going on. And Should lunch. they call and make an appointment or just show up? Either way, I think making an appointment the first time is good mm -hmm. because you're going to have the opportunity to meet with the people that you True. need to meet, meet with and talk to. Mm -hmm. If you just show up, the person who, the, the salesperson who is going to be showing you around or talking to you may not be available. True. But definitely go back at another time without showing up and just showing up. Weekends are a little, weekends are more quiet because a lot of people go home for the, or go off with their family on a vacation or for out to dinner or for weekends. Assisted living is, is your home. Correct. Come and go as you please. It's not, you don't have to ask permission. You might have to sign out and sign back in, right. but it's your, it's your home. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all of the information. This has been fantastic. Oh, you great. know, I'm sure a lot of people can, you know, relate to this and I'm sure we'll utilize your services. Absolutely. Thanks I was just going to end on a fun note. Okay. Okay. So it is January, and people make resolutions. Have you made any New Year's resolutions this year? I wouldn't say resolutions, but coincidentally, I did start back up in the gym recently. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a biggie for everybody. <laughs> also, now people start think about thinking about traveling. Mm. Do you have a favorite vacation spot? Martha's Vineyard. Uh, I go in the fall, go in the winter, go in the summer. I just love, it's nice and quiet. Love the place. I love it there too. And finally, if you had to pick another job or occupation, what would that be? Ah, I think I would do something with adolescents, with adolescence counseling. You know, um, criminal adolescents, people, adolescents who are in trouble. Trouble. Yeah. Of course you would. <laughs> you love to help people. John, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please tune in next time. Have a great day. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, John.